Welcome back, everybody, to this week's episode of the Standing Room Only podcast, episode number 54. I'm Goose. As always, I am here with Healy. I just want to thank you guys for tuning in once again. Uh, we do apologize. We did not have an episode last week. That was due to the holidays. I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. They were able to eat up and had good leftovers. I know I did. Uh, I just want to say, if you guys are listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, go ahead, hit that download button. That'll really help us out. That is how we get our counts. We don't see actual view count. We are the SR Only Pod on Twitter, Instagram. We're on YouTube as well. And then you can follow our personal accounts. I am iGoose with four O's. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I am on Twitch. And then we have Healy. You can follow me at the Healy Six on Twitter and Instagram, and then YouTube and Twitch is Healy Six. So we're gonna start off this week's episode with some baseball talk. Not a lot, but uh, the non-tender deadline happened. If you guys are unaware, guys in arbitration, uh, they major leaguers need six years of major league service to become a free agent. After three years, they can somewhat negotiate their own contract. Uh, arbitration is basically the player puts out a number what they're worth, the team puts out a number what they're worth, and then there's, there's uh, arbitrators who determine who's right in the circumstance, and then the team has to pay a person that amount. So due to the money loss of a lot of owners and guys not worth their value anymore, we got a lot of guys in arbitration. They normally get non-tendered here. There's a lot more than I than previous years due to the pandemic. Not a great excuse, but the owners are using it as one. Oh, we saw Kyle Schwarber get non-tendered today. Him and Albert Almora. Almora, it was his time to leave. I liked him on the team, but he wasn't getting opportunities anymore. And when given some, he just wasn't playing that hot. So he needs to go to it somewhere else. We'll give him more opportunities. Kyle Schwarber, though, that's the one I'm surprised about. Maybe the Cubs were a little hesitant on the DH coming back next year. He also only has like one or two years left with the team. I'll take a peek on that in a minute. But he was expected to make $8 million. He got paid $7 million last year. He only posted point, negative point one war which isn't good at all. And a lot of contracts or a lot of like determining a player's worth uh, is $8 million for one war. And he wasn't even getting one war last year. He had a 701 OPS. He's been struggling a little bit at the plate. He's only a career 230 hitter. It's not great. Slugging's great. His career OPS is 800. That's a very solid average. Very solid average that or uh, OPS that you'd love from a player. But from like actually getting hits and stuff and walking, he was just an okay guy. It'll be sad for him to go. He did have five years of service time. He's expected to be free agent next year anyways. So doesn't necessarily matter they're gonna have to fill in some of the spots in the outfield one of them though our guy michael hermosillo he got yes. picked up today by the chicago cubs we had him on the podcast a few episodes ago awesome guy he was in the angels organization he was kind of stuck he was their fourth or fifth outfielder or if he was their fourth, he would have been on like the major league team, but he was like their fifth outfielder. They had Mike Trout, Justin Upton, the number one prospect, Joe Adele. They have Brandon Marsh coming up. They have had veterans like Cole Calhoun, Brian Goodwin. There's just no spots for him. Cubs went out. They reached out to him. That was one of the teams I thought he could have went to. Being a Cubs fan, awesome to see. He's now, he signed a minor league deal. People are like, okay, what what gives? But for him signing a minor league deal, that means he's not on the 40 man. I don't think he could be drafted in the rule five. So basically, if he works well enough or, or hard enough, he'll be on the roster easily. And then 
he doesn't take up a 40 man spot right now so i think they could sign maybe a couple guys or move a couple guys onto the 40 man so that uh teams won't take them in the rule five draft the rule five draft for anyone unaware guys not on the 40 man roster and i think it's a certain age or a certain amount of time they've been in the minors they are eligible to be picked up and if you do pick up one of these guys they're kind of close to major league ready they need to be on your 40-man roster and actually your major league roster as well if they're not on the major league roster then they get sent back to the team that they got drafted from so i think spring training he'll easily be on the team right now it's only him hap and hayward as like potential outfielders yeah, I was going to say, especially after the non-tender with uh, Schwarber, I mean, that obviously clears up uh, a little bit of room. Uh, I mean, to fall back on Schwarber, I mean, we always talked about the rebuild with the Cubs. At what point was it going to happen? I mean, I know a lot of times there was trade block rumors, get value back. Obviously, that's not the case, but, um, you know, good luck to Schwarber and his endeavors. But, you know, I feel like it was maybe the right time to do it. Um he just wasn't performing, but huge shout out to Michael Hermosillo. As you just mentioned, he was on the podcast. Uh, you interviewed him recently, a couple years back, a few years back. And he always said growing up, he was a Cubs, huge Cubs fan. Uh, when we talked to him, he gave us the breakdown, how he is, uh, you know, lived in Illinois for quite a while, went to high school out here. Um, so it's like almost like a welcome back home, you know, for him, which is awesome. It's a dream I mean, come true. Yeah, it's a dream come true. He gets to play in Wrigley. Uh, I have a good feeling he's going to end up boosting his way up to the major league roster. Uh, obviously hard work does pay off and I'm sure he is one to, uh, to bust his ass and, uh, to get to that point. So that's a, that's a huge shout out right there, man. That that's, that's big time. So, um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, with the Cubs, there's only three, there's three, you said Hap Hayward and, uh, and Michael Hermosillo as of right now. And I don't even know of any free agents that are really worth targeting, uh, there, there's there's a couple that they could look at right now mm -hmm. adam duvall got non-tendered oh, okay he had 16 homers this past year david dahl got non-tendered he's always been very solid in the colorado yeah. outfield he's a lefty bat he mm -hmm. could be picked up for the chicago team as well there's a lot of opportunity for the outfield right now for the chicago cubs no more mazara to be picked yeah. up he got yep. non-tendered by the White Sox, him, and Carlos Rodon. I was hyped on Nomar Mazar last year. I remember when they signed him, you and I both were like, he has potential. He could easily like, help this team out. He's a young guy. He hit pretty well. He had some power. He's a lefty bat. Wasn't too bad yep. in the field. White Sox just didn't want to pay him. They want to go in a different direction, which is completely fine. There'll be another yeah. team that, that's looking out for him. Carlos Rodon, he'd easily go to a different team. I think the fact mm -hmm. that he's been hurt and also he's expected to get a decent chunk of money. The White Sox said we could go with a different free agent or they could just get someone up in the farm system. They do have Michael Kopech coming back this year, potentially. Yep. He could easily yep. fit in that role. So it'd be him, Giolito, Cease, Eichel. Kopech. Or that's Kopech. four. They have Gio Gonzalez. That rounds out the top five right there. And it all depends on the type of season that we have. Obviously, to, if it ends up being a shortened season... For, you know, obviously for the, the COVID purpose, right? Uh, we did see uh, Gio Gonzalez. He he was uh, coming off the uh, out of the bullpen a few times. He did end yep. up starting a couple times as well. Uh, he got roughed up a little bit, but then there were some games where he was lights out. So obviously the talent's there. Um, but the Sox have a lot going on. Obviously, Nomar Mazzara didn't really perform too much, but it's really, really hard to judge on only a 60-game season. A lot of guys underperformed, as we saw. A lot of guys that were... MVP candidates underperformed, um, but he'll get paid. No more Mazar is going to get paid and the Sox are okay. They have power everywhere still. Um, I don't think scoring runs is going to be a problem for quite a while. Um, I'm excited as a Sox fan. I'm super excited. Radon. Uh, yeah, he has, he has talent, but you know, like you mentioned, Kopech's coming back. We have a guaranteed four. Um, we'll see what they end up doing in the, uh, maybe when the off season, maybe they end up picking somebody up. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they do. And then, um, 
hopefully maybe something in the bullpen there as well. So I think pitching has been uh, the, the root of evil for quite a few teams, including the White Sox. So I want to be surprised if he stays in Chicago, though, as a Cub. Cubs are going to need some pitching as well. So we'll have mm-hmm. to see. We'll have to see what happens with them. Uh, the Brewers brought back Orlando Arcia, $2 million. Okay deal there. Brewers mm-hmm. aren't really doing much. I'm just, man, after seeing some of these moves and seeing what the rosters come to for the Cubs, I'm scared. I know they want to kind of rebuild, but please do not go into a 100 loss rebuild where you just don't know anyone. Just like take a 70 win season where like you still have some of the guys build up that farm a little bit, build up some of the signings and then get right back to competing. They can compete. I mean, they didn't have a bad 60 game season. Schwarber didn't really do much. So him being gone is they're not really missing much. I mean, no. yeah, there was a few years where he hit a lot of bombs. I think he had like a 38 home run season a couple seasons ago. And, you know, it's just hard when you're constantly batting so below average. You're batting barely, barely par 200, right? You're barely breaking 200. So I think it's going to fall down on the two. I mean, Brizzo, right? Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo. If those two guys can get their act together, even if they're hitting for average of 280, right? Yeah, that's fine. If, that's fine because that means you're, you're, you're batting. Well, Chris Bryant has been batting second. We'll see if he stays there. If they move him around, who knows what's going to happen, but you got the team needs to get on base. You Darvish is an incredible pitcher. He is worth every penny they spent. At first, it didn't seem like it. And I know I myself was not a believer. I thought it was a horrible move, but he has been pitching lights out. That should be, if your bats are doing okay, that should be a 12 to 13 win pitcher automatically, even on those days where the bats just don't show up because he pitches and gives up one to two runs. His ERA was low. His whip was was super low. I mean, it's just a matter of how are these bats going to come alive in those times when, I mean, the pitching, it's going to happen. There's going to be days where the pitching isn't there. Obviously, Lester's gone. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening. We'll see. But I, I think they can still pull off a 70, maybe close to an 80-game season mm-hmm. if they play their cards right. They're only a couple pieces away. Trevor May. One of the first relievers to be signed, Twitch streamer. If you guys don't know, he got signed in the New York Mets for yep. 15 point something million for two years. Great signing by the Mets. If any yep. other bullpen uh, boosted. And Trevor May, the past couple of years, he originally started off as a starter. Past few years, he's moved to the pen. I think he had Tommy John like three years ago or something. He's been killing it ever since in the bullpen. Rose hard. I thought he was going to get a little more. I thought he might have got like twenty million for two years, but he he got seven seven point something per year. Great signing. It was funny. Steve Cohen on Twitter today said, "Uh, what?" <laughs> he said, "What players that got non tendered interest you the most, and why?" Which is just hilarious as an owner. He's like, "All right, what guys got non tendered? Why? Why should we get them?" And he's basically putting it out there like, all right, Mets fans, who do you guys want? And like, are they good? Do we look at them? It's, oh man, it's he's Steve Cohen's so, so cool. He stands out above the rest, man. He's so unorthodox, but you can't help but love it. You can't help but love it. That's the type of owner everybody should look to try to be. Yeah, that's going to be something we all talk about in like five, ten years to see if things work out. Mm-hmm. Because it, it could hurt him, but... As we know in baseball, if you like spending money, you're going to have a lot of success. And you can't. Usually, yeah. usually. Unless you're the Yankees, you have the, some of the highest payroll, and you just can't win a championship for some reason. They, they'll, haven't, they'll fin- get theirs. they haven't finished below 500 since the that 90s. Since the 90s or 80s. That is true. And that's success right there. It's uh, You can't always measure success by championships. Uh, I mean, you could, I guess you can always look at, well, my team hasn't won for 108 years, no pun intended, but I, that's not always the, the name of the game. It's how, how do we grow? How do we win more than we did last year? Uh, mm-hmm. So on and so forth. So, and the Mets are on their way. I can tell you that. 
besides that i there wasn't too much happening in baseball it's gonna be a little bit of a slow off season jose iglesias got traded from the orioles to the angels he's gonna fill in for angelton simmons which kind of like the replacement is pretty much a mirror of simmons a little worse defensively we all know simmons is great but he's the same play style with the bat kind of a contact guy he hit very well in the 60 game season i think he might have led the american league could be wrong he hit 373 in 39 games last year wow which 39 games small sample size but he, he should fill in great with the the angels uh keenan milton got non-tendered by them He's another guy that I've like become friends with over the years. He throws like 100. So wow. he's going to be a bullpen piece to look out for. But besides that, not too much other info happened in baseball. It's going to be a little bit of a slow off season as guys. I think teams are going to pick up a, these non-tendered guys first. And then the money's going to be spent on like Trevor Bauer and some of these other guys. Speaking of free agents, though, we'll switch over to some basketball. Not necessarily free agent, but LeBron Huge James news. signed yeah. a two-year extension. So, how does that work? Where, like, did he originally sign a two, two and two-year deal, or like, what? At what point is this contract extending on? I would assume that's from the end of next his season? original deal. Next season, his original deal. It's already been uh, so four what, years. Yeah, so basically the original contract that he signed in 2018 gave him 41 mil and the player option for next year, 21-22 okay. season, right? So this removes uh, the player uh, option. Yeah, so basically what's going to end up what it's going to end up being here is the salary set in stone. Uh so he has I'm trying to read what theoretically what he actually got here. So he could have so he could have opted out in 21-22 to clear up space to re uh restructure a contract. Um so there would so I think the mindset is give him this and I I still think they're going to try to get Giannis somehow. I I really don't know how any team's going to be able to afford all of all three of those guys. I mean, I guess you can make it work. We saw what the Wizards were uh I'm sorry, the Warriors were able to do. Um but yeah, it's 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 really it, I don't really see exactly. So it's all. It's a win-win situation. They're still able to create max space next season, which obviously Giannis, we don't know what he's going to do now that they kind of failed him in the off season a little bit. We don't know if, I mean, I don't see them as being a serious contender. I mean, they're going to be a contender. I just don't know how well they're going to contend um, without adding to uh to their roster so we could end up seeing with this signing with this lebron signing uh by him extending his deal and working out uh his contract that Giannis could end up signing with the lakers after this upcoming season i think anthony davis is waiting on signing and the lakers are as well until Giannis makes an official decision because who knows Giannis could sign the supermax this off season that is and, true and that is if, true. He, if he does then i think the lakers are going to give anthony davis more money or like they would just do another one-year deal for him instead so that they could sign him next year with bird rights and whatnot so they're going to wait on that i'm pretty sure anthony davis hasn't signed yet there's there's been a bunch of supermax deals mm -hmm. over the past couple of weeks a lot and yeah. i'm trying to trying to like bring them all back to my mind darren jason fox tatum. jason yeah. tatum darren fox yeah. was a surprising one i actually you know what i think it's very well deserved i've i've been watching i've been admiring his game like mm -hmm. that key i've been admiring that king's team they've been quietly growing quietly growing uh, Buddy Heald never gets talked about. He's literally one of the, I would say, top three, top five, three-point shooters in the game. Even coming off the bench, averaging over 20 a game. De'Aaron Fox is one of the fastest point guards next to West Russ Westbrook, which he might even be faster than him now that Westbrook's getting older. His defense is great. Uh, he gets, he attacks the rim. He scores. 
Um, I don't even know what his numbers were, but I'm pretty sure he was almost leading the league in steals. Um, so I, I like that. I like that uh, he got the uh, the max extension mm-hmm. to letting him know you are a guy in the long run. And at his age, he's super young. I mean, yeah. just like some of these other guys, Bam it's... Adebayo got it and Jason Tatum. All these guys are super young. All are probably going to end up making more money than LeBron James made in his career, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, different t- different times, obviously. But I think LeBron, at the end of his career, which is through 2023, if he does retire, aside from um, incentives and uh, endorsements, I believe he's just shy of 500 mil. Um, and these guys who signed this super max deal, which I think is seven years for 180. Five years. Oh, it's only five years. Okay, wow. So my math was off. That's even more. So five years for about 180 mil. Um, and that's already putting them at half of what LeBron uh, had made, uh, just under half. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, but you mentioned it. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of super max deals. Um, well-deserved, I would say. It's, it's, it's weird because a lot of people are like, man, how can somebody make that much money in the NBA? They don't realize that the cap room has gone up, you know, with the addition of um, promotion on the jerseys and TV deals and all these guys, everybody's making more money. Yeah. Le- LeBron's making like 45 extra million dollars a year. Um, I mean, you compare, I mean, those guys should be making as much as the best in the league. Cause I mean, they are right now the best in the league. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I said it was a little surprised in the Darren Fox one, not because of his talent level, but just because he wanted to re-sign with the Kings. I guess at his age, go ahead. That's a lot of money you're leaving on the table if you decide to sign somewhere else. Teams, that is true. Teams have a lot of leverage in re-signing their players over going and signing with someone else. As we know, the Kings organization's just okay. It's been all right for years. But he, who knows? Maybe they'll turn it around. Maybe they'll sign some better players to put around him. They they just signed uh, last week, I believe. Uh, I think it was last week. Was Hassan Whiteside, who again is another guy that's been kind of quiet, but puts up numbers. He's a pretty good paint presence. He he's there. He's like a seven footer. He's gonna get you blocks. He doesn't shoot the long ball, so he doesn't stretch the offensive floor for any teams but they're they're going to run a traditional your point guard is your point guard your shooting guard is your shooting guard so on and so forth Hassan Whiteside is not a two-way player but his defense uh his blocking ability and his rebounding ability is going to be huge offensive rebounds he's he's able to do it they have Marvin Bagley the third uh and Harrison Barnes too believe it or not Harrison Barnes I mean I know he's getting up there in age but he's he's an all-around player he scores when he has to I mean he's not he's not like I wouldn't say one of the best scores I'd say he's about a, an average to above average player uh and obviously defensively we know he's pretty well too uh he was good with the Warriors so uh, this team they're a I would say maybe a draft pick or two and maybe a signing away uh, from actually being, I would say, a serious a serious threat in the West. Um, but it's going to be two to three years, two mm-hmm. to three years, as long as they play their cards right. You can't just throw all that money de- at De'Aaron Fox and, and think, well, let's go grab Hassan Whiteside and that's the answer. They still have to develop the young talent and eventually they're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to add a, a better th- uh, three man. The Harrison Barnes is not going to be the future of this team. Glenn Robinson, the third coming off the bench. He's okay, but they're going to have to, that three, that small forward position is huge in the NBA, huge. So uh, over the next couple of years, I would expect them to uh, try to make a run at somebody, somebody. Yeah. They did draft Tyrese Holly Burden. Who's they a point did guard another point yep. guard. Yep. Uh, he was, he was uh, another one people talked highly about. Yeah, uh, he, he could definitely help. They just need to get their draft picks right and then hopefully get someone to team up with Darren Fox. If not, Darren Fox could be used as a huge trade haul in a few years regardless. Oh, and, hands and down. In NBA, we've seen a bunch of people get traded. So it, it's a win-win situation for the Kings and Darren Fox. Uh, yeah, going Darren back to your Fox. LeBron uh, mm-hmm. earnings, he's earned three hundred forty-three million in his career, and he's expected to earn four hundred thirty. Four thirty. Okay, so I was close. So I was close. 
So, and I mean, obviously he's probably going to make a billion after his endorsements and his shoe sales and all that, but uh, it's, it's interesting to see. But then again, he play, also played a lot longer than everybody that was drafted in the 03 uh, season. Um, so, but a yeah. huge signing for the Lakers and the fun fact, LeBron is, so that puts him through the 2023 season. Um, and guess what? That would be the first year of eligibility for his son, Bronny, yep. uh, to come out into the NBA. And I know he's talked about it, and he's talked about it recently, how he would love to play with his son. And at the way he's going, and I know, I, I forgot what the number is. I think it might be like a million dollars or some crazy number. Uh, he has like a, a personal trainer, a dietitian, just to keep his body right and his mind right. I wouldn't be surprised if LeBron is still putting up LeBron type numbers in two to three years, in three years when his son comes out. Yeah. And, and it would be a incredible. It, it, you know, what it reminds me of in a way is, is Griffey. Yep. You know, you notice like the, the back-to-back -back home runs, the Griffey senior and the Griffey junior, and you watch it and you're like, man, that is a crazy father son moment. That's gotta yeah. be one of the craziest, right? It would never and happen now, again. And now we have it, LeBron no. and his son. And his son, can you imagine? I mean, his son is super talented. And oop. <laughs> and oop. And then like his family sitting courtside and it's a huge family moment. And it's right, it's in it's in LA, the house that Shaq and Kobe and and Kareem Abdul and all these other guys built. And it's just one big moment, you know. It's just, or just thinking about it. Chicago gets a good draft pick and they draft Brownie and they sign they could be. I wonder how much it's gonna influence the draft. Because let's just say Bronny is he comes into the NBA and he's projected a number fifteen pick, and LeBron's putting up LeBron numbers. Does Bronny, does you knowing you have the number one pick or number two pick, but knowing Bronny isn't as good as like some of these other guys, worth it to pick him up just because you know LeBron is gonna go to where he goes. I feel like he would be the number one or number two pick just because of that. Just because well, LeBron, you're guaranteed to like sign LeBron. But yeah, 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 that's tough. If, that's he's, if LeBron's tough. putting up LeBron numbers still, you're getting a top five player in basketball still with young talent who could improve and mentor or like uh, LeBron could mentor his son. It would make you a championship team, pretty much. I think, I feel like he would have a say in that. LeBron has a say in everything. LeBron probably has a say in what kind of toilet paper they have in the facility, right? Mm -hmm. So I could see that being the case. I mean, personally, from a business standpoint, do you do it? Do you not do it? Well, if you're going to lose LeBron, you're not just losing the chance to win, but you're losing uh, numbers. Like, fan I mean, they're always going to sell out. But if LeBron goes, do you think the Lakers are – do you think that they can make as much money as if they didn't have LeBron? I don't think so. If Anthony Davis signs a, a, this this super max deal, okay, they'll have Anthony Davis. They'll always be a contender at that point. Your son is only projected fifteenth or sixteenth. Do you do you want that, or do you want to play against him? I think playing against him would be kind of cool too. I think Father's with the opportunity, his son. <laughs> I think with the opportunity of him being able to play with his son, you take it. There's just no, I, there's this chance rarely happens. You have to play super long. You have to have a kid at a very young age and with. Yeah. And he has to be good. It, it, everything has to line up. It's so funny because if, if they draft him at 15th and he comes off the bench and plays 10 minutes a game and they win a championship, LeBron haters are still going to say they only won because Bronny was there. So <laughs> it doesn't even matter. <laughs> but that would be incredible. I'm with you on that 100%. Um, you know, and and who knows what's going to happen at that point. I mean, Anthony Davis will be in his 30s. This is, we're talking three years. Well, just under three years. Assuming the world's back to normal and they do the draft during the normal, I think at the end of June or whatever it is. Um, but season starts soon. Everybody, uh, seven days, I think, is the first day. of pre. Uh, they're running a few preseason games. And then it is uh, the 23rd of December, I believe, is NBA tip-off. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. 22nd. But it's the 22nd. Okay, Yo, that makes sense. Warriors-Nets. 
Warriors Nets, that's why they had yesterday a post of 21 Savage and they just said this many days to basketball, yep. which makes sense. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Basketball is, mm-hmm. is, is, is we're going to have football, football swinging into the playoffs. Basketball's back. A lot of baseball news. Uh, obviously, baseball, we might end up getting a full season. We don't know what's going to happen yet. Um, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. But that's that's pretty much it for well, NBA news. There's Jason Tatum. What do you think about that signing? Jason, that's incredible. That's incredible. Bam out of bio. We Jason Ta- talked about. It. Yeah, Jason Tatum was a must. Bam out of bio. I love Bam out of bio. I think he's a great player. I feel like the block that he had on Jason Tatum in the playoffs to seal that series was um i'm trying to think of the term i can't think of the term the the magnitude of that block Mm -hmm. definitely gave him that push for miami to say all right he's a real deal i love i love his style of play there's games you don't even expect him to score a whole lot of points but then there's games where he does he dominates the pain inside he's He's kind of elusive for his position, for his role, which it makes him dangerous. Uh, I like it. I like both. I definitely think Jason Tatum is a little bit more important um, than Bam Adebayo. I'm not saying Bam Adebayo is not important at all. That whole team, every single guy on that team is just as important as one another. But Boston with Kemba being hurt and now Gordon Hayward's gone. He went to Charlotte. We didn't talk about that. Oh yeah, we did. We talked about that in the last episode. Um, you know, they we don't know which way Boston's gonna go. I mean, as far as it goes, it's Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, maybe Kemba Walker if he stays healthy. That's a maybe. I, there's been news. He's been in the news for his injury recently, which I'm glad the Bulls didn't trade up for. Yeah. But at, and then it's like, well, who else do they really have? I mean. Are they a contender? I I don't know. I don't. I can't say that they're. they're yeah, in the East they're a contender, but I don't know if they're going to be able to top Miami in a seven game series. I don't think they're going to be able to top um, the Nets in a seven game series or Atlanta, who's looking very nice right now. We'll see what ends up happening with Atlanta. I mean, they can easily be a fourth or a fifth seed. Boston, as long as Jason Tatum is there, I personally think he is an. He's a huge X fact. He's more of an X factor than Bam Adebayo is, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But both are well deserved. And yeah, Jason Tatum. I guess he'll he'll just have to take take control. He's been very good past few years. Let's see if we can push it to the next level. Uh, we didn't mm-hmm. talk about the Bogdan Bogdanovich move. How he signed with Atlanta. The Kings mm-hmm. didn't match their deal. It's just so odd how he could have went to the Bucks, could have went with a sign and trade. It's an instant number one seed in the East, possibly a finals run. And he was like, no, I'm going to the Hawks. Very weird. Maybe he was thinking about his future and thought, yes, I could do this next year, but he's thinking about the long term how the Hawks are built better for the long term. Yep. Giannis. And no. Yep. I feel like Giannis, like, doesn't matter what kind of team they give him next year. I think he's gone. I, that's exactly, that has to be the mindset. That was my mindset. You know, at first I was like, why wouldn't you go to an instant contender? Well, Giannis is going to handle the ball most of the time, which is fine. But Donovan, I mean, he, he'll play his role regardless of where he goes. But if you think in two years, three years, four years, which team is going to actually be the one to keep pushing uh, as, a, as a big contender? In my opinion, I think Atlanta is the most interesting team in the East right now, considering Trey Young in his second dominated the league. Uh, John Collins is only getting better. John Collins, we witnessed John Collins dominate uh, firsthand uh, last season, the season before. And, you know, it. They have all of the pieces needed. Bogdanovich goes there. Uh, they signed Danilo Gallinari, which was kind of weird. He's coming off the bench, huge contract, or semi-huge contract. Um, but they have so many weapons. And the simple fact is, as long as they keep Trey Young, they keep John Collins, Clint Capella is not old. Clint Capella is pretty okay. 
And then, you know, I, I just feel like Atlanta is the future of the East right now, the way it's going. And the Bucks, so I'm sure Bucks fans feel the same way. They had they didn't, they have not set up Giannis for success. Nobody should have to put up and break a PER record, a player efficiency rating record, and still struggle in the playoffs. It just shouldn't happen. And it's, I mean, nobody was putting up numbers on that team. Nobody was putting up numbers. So I don't blame uh, blame Bogdanovich for it. Another thing too, he probably could have been a little salty. There could have been something where uh, he was upset with the Kings and they something, you know, they wanted to trade him. And he's like, well, okay, you're going to trade me. And I'm going to stop that. And let's, let's screw you over. And now I'm going to go play for this better team in the future. Yeah. That's definitely the case for that. Mm -hmm. So we won't ever know that. Just interesting aspect in that part. Uh, we can talk about the biggest thief in NBA history. So LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Gordon Hayward are the only three players in NBA history to sign multiple contracts worth 30 plus million per year. It's going to change over the future because we got Steph Curry, uh, Harden, Westbrook, all those guys, they're going to eventually sign 30 plus. But the fact that you hear LeBron James, yeah, deserves that. Kevin Durant, yeah, makes sense. And then you hear Gordon Hayward. He got signed, it was it four years, 120? Yeah, yeah. To the yep. Hornets? What? It, it's kind of funny, too, because I think I read somewhere that he was – on the Hornets radar or he wanted to go to to the Hornets previously to Charlotte and it just didn't work and then he ended up in Boston and now he's back and he's older you know they always say you get older you become wiser but Gordon Hayward hasn't really been showing up and showing out maybe maybe he will maybe with the addition of LaMelo Ball they have Graham there. You add Gordon Hayward. They have a pretty talented team. I mean, they can easily compete in the East. Maybe not this year, but I'd say the year after. Um, but that is a little surprising to hear. It's definitely surprising to hear. Speaking of, speaking of, I, I don't know if you wanted to finish that, but you mentioned a name, and we forgot about one huge thing that just happened hours ago. Yep. Well, not, John, not hours ago, like an hour ago. <laughs> an hour ago, an hour ago. John Wall of the Wizards is no longer with the Wizards. He got traded to the Rockets for Russell Westbrook. There is a first round pick, I believe, for the 2023 season. Yep. Protected pick. Protected. Um, that is going to the uh to the Rockets. So the Rockets, in a way considering they're not winning with the duo of Harden and Westbrook. So the Rockets go out, they grab Boogie, but DeMarcus Cousins, who has been hurt, uh, still talented, still, I don't want to say he's not old. He's not old at all. I mean, he's getting up there in age, right? But not old. Um, they get John Wall, who's also been hurt. So there's high risk there. You have guys who've been hurt. But the simple fact is Harden and Westbrook don't win. So try something. And the fact that they got a protected first round pick. So hopefully it works out that they, I assume when it's protected, it's, it's going to be lottery protected. I don't Probably. know the details or a top 10 protected. So we'll see what ends up happening, but that could end up being huge. There's always talent all throughout a draft. So definitely a huge trade. We, I know that we've been waiting for Westbrook to get dealt. Didn't happen on draft night. The rumors died down. John Wall has been wanting out of Washington, it seemed like, for the past, I don't know, six years. And it happened. And I actually like it. I think it's good for both teams. Washington's not going to contend. So why not grab, get Russell Westbrook, um, who should play uh, play well, hopefully, alongside Bradley Beal. They have Hachimura, obviously, at the power forward. They have some talent there. So they'll, have, they'll, they'll fill the seats. Are they going to compete? maybe maybe not i don't think they will personally and then the rockets are should be able to compete it all depends though on the type of player that john wall comes back as i believe he tore his achilles um while hurt and out for a different injury so it's a serious injury uh guys don't always come back 100 um 
you know, obviously we were waiting to see uh, what was going to happen with Clay Thompson. And now he's out for the season because mm-hmm. he, uh, he tore his. So now it's like, you know, you tear an ACL. We see, we've seen guys come back from ACL injuries. Normally it's like more so in the NFL, but now we're seeing guys come back. They train, they're still as fast, but the Achilles, I mean, Kobe was never the same. I know Kobe was older. I know Kobe was older, but when you tear the Achilles, it just does something to the, to the body and it, We'll see what ends up happening. I'm excited, though. I'm excited to see what this duo of James Harden and John Wall can do. Because I personally think that they will succeed more than James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Definitely. This is kind of like, so John Wall, Russell Westbrook, they're kind of similar players, but they have different mindsets with how they attack the game. Mm -hmm. Westbrook. I think Westbrook and Beal are going to match up together. They're just going to go shot for shot. They're volume shooters. They both play with heart. Westbrook or John Wall and Harden kind of reminds me of the Chris Paul era with James Harden. Mm -hmm. Chris Paul, more of a facilitator. I feel like John Wall plays the point guard role better. He'll actually be able to pass the ball more. He Mm -hmm. won't take as many dumb shots, but he could take over games if needed. We will see how well he comes back. He The last time he played above 42 games was 2017. Past three years, he's played a combined total of 70 games, including zero in last year or last season. They're both getting, they're, they're both making money or like getting paid until 22, 23. They both become free agents in 23. So... They aren't really giving up money at all. John Wall's making forty-one million. Same with Russell Westbrook. Next year, forty-four million. Same with Russell Westbrook. And then their last years, they're both making forty-seven million. So, pretty much a clean swap. Uh, uh, spot track, or however you pronounce it, already has John Wall in the Rockets and stuff. So they oh, nice. work. They're they're working quick. It's just. The Rockets now they get to see how well they 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 gave Russell Westbrook what he wanted a trade and keeping the team somewhat the same. Now I don't see James Harden really getting moved unless they're really bad. Unless this team doesn't work out and they're like 12 and 30 in the season, I don't see James Harden moving anymore. They're going to be forced to trade him for a bunch of picks at that point. But that's not always bad. It is not always bad. Uh, having those picks turn into super young, good talent. Super young, good talent can be packaged and traded for the Anthony Davises in the world. So we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, I'm excited. John Wall to me is more of a true point guard than what Russ is. Russ is just this explosive, uh, like you said, volume shooter, shoot until I may, or until I make it versus a shoot till I miss. There's never a heat. I mean, it's rarely ever a heat check for him. Don't want to take anything away from him. He's had a great career. He's a, I mean, he's a good ball player. Um, but I'm, I'm more excited for, uh, for John Wall in this Rockets uniform to see how he matches up. Um, and now that they have a big man, it, it makes all the difference. I don't care if he's been hurt the last few years. He still is, knows how to use his body. He knows how to grab boards. The simple fact is he's a 6'11 or 7-foot center who's going to still spread the floor a little bit because Boogie can shoot, but it's a whole different Rockets team that we are going to be watching. This will not be the same Rockets team, so be on the lookout. Mm -hmm. So next week, we'll talk about more of like the preseason hype. Uh, Players had a report this week their areas it was like what auto porter auto porter might be done with the bulls they've uh put him on the trade block oh there was video uh that of him that surfaced super recently in the last couple of days at a huge party huge party not social distancing possibly in chicago which is not good right now considering illinois is like the the center of (laughs) of all this whole pandemic um, but yeah, they, they put him on the trade block. Uh, as of right now, he's not going to the media day for the team. Good. He's not doing anything, which I, if this is how it has to happen, I'm cool with that. I'm okay with that. I personally do not think 
Because here's the thing. You're going to have a guy who makes $28 million a year. From a business standpoint, yeah, he's he's talented. He's okay. We're going to have to force to play him, right? Now, if he gets in trouble and we're forced to trade him, that's best case scenario. Because what are you doing? You're putting in the next best player that's going to be with the team a couple of years because Otto Porter was not coming back next year. And you could start developing an identity for this team today. Mm-hmm. Today. You don't have a future with Otto Porter. So why not start preparing now? Why put a guy in who is not going to be the genetic makeup of this team after this season anyways? So this is actually a good case scenario. Good case scenario for Chicago. Oh, 100%. I'm excited about that, actually. (laughs) Oh, yeah. 100%. Uh, We might get some more news next week. It sounds like teams are getting getting their like finalized roster wanted to touch on one more thing before we move to the nfl leangelo ball signed a contract non-guaranteed with the detroit pistons so officially lavar ball has three sons in the nba he told everyone it was going to happen while they were in high school and you can't knock him for that that the dude's crazy he he does some wild stuff, but at the end He's, of the day, he mm-hmm. did exactly what he set out to do, and his boys are proven. Uh, or I don't yeah. know. I I just I just lost everything that I meant to say, but they're they're making him proud. He set them up for success. He is crazy. Some of the things he said, yeah, was a hundred percent crazy, but. He had that law of attraction. He had that mindset that my boys are good enough to compete. And he drilled that, instilled that in their head. They were a, I mean, eye of society. They had their own TV show, right? And mm-hmm. so, you know, a lot of times you see a lot of, I don't want to say failures due to that, being on the spotlight. But he he taught them. He taught them, you're going to keep working hard. You're going to do this. And you're going to be in, in, in the NBA. And Leangelo, we don't know how well he's going to ball out. I mean, he's he's pretty good, I would say. I mean, he got signed to a non-guaranteed deal with an NBA team with the Pistons. Um, but that's huge, man. Huge shout out to Lavar. You know, a lot of people hate him. I, I I'm not. I was never ever the biggest fan of him, but he stood by his word, and you got to appreciate that. So moving on to football news, we finally finished up the week. <laughs> About was... time the Ravens and Steelers played at 3:40 Eastern time today cuz oh, NBC man, did not wa- they did not want to push back their Christmas ceremony. Wild week in the NFL. The Ravens Steelers game got moved multiple times. We saw the Broncos play without a quarterback. Just an insane week. Uh Mitch Very wild. came back. And he did okay, exactly how we thought he would be. Trubisky came back. If we have to go back to whatever episode it was weeks ago, I said it only makes sense if you're losing to throw Trubisky back in because not for the simple fact that Foles isn't winning, but what else do you have to lose on a guy who's on the last year of his contract it's just, I mean, you you want the best and most athletic and, and I mean, I would say even a better arm than, than Folds. And I'm so happy that it worked out just like I thought. Now, it didn't work out in the sense that they were going to win because Green Bay came out and molly on Chicago. They did try for a last quarter comeback. They did give me a little nervous in the last five minutes of the game because the Bears all season has had last minute comebacks. It didn't happen. But uh, Trubisky, with his first game back, I would say was about what you would expect from a Mitch Trubisky game. He had some, a lot of misses, threw a couple picks. Um, but, I mean, can't do anything with a bad line. You cannot do anything with a bad line. But he, uh, uh, one of the good things was he was a little bit more mobile. He scrambled out of the pocket when he had to uh, on a few occasions. And that is what you need to drill in his head, just like, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Daniel Jones, like all these quarterbacks do it. And it's important that you have a quarterback who's not only able to do it, but actually does it. So 
yeah, they lost to Green Bay, but Green Bay is also like top two in the NFC right now. So, David Montgomery, dude, I don't know about you, but when I saw him break out that run at the beginning of the game, I was Man. like, that was his longest run of his career. I was like, why can't we see this more often? Because he's so exciting. Green Bay's defense, it's it's weird. They've been notorious for giving up the big runs to 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 running backs. He ended up with over 100 yards, but, I mean, he started off the game with almost 70. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, Green Bay's got some big bodies down there in the middle with Kenny Clark and some others. So, uh, But one other thing, the Bears did lose, but think about it this way. They were without Akeem Hicks, which opened up the run game for Green Bay. If Green Bay has a good running game, they're going to go undefeated like 10 times out of 10. It's when it's when Aaron Jones all of a sudden is is running into brick walls and then Jamal Williams might only break for two or three yards. And now, OK, Aaron Rodgers is forced to pass 35, 40 times. Maybe you hit him a couple of times. Well, you shut down that offense. The defense is proven. Yeah, they have a great pass defense when it comes to like one on one and Jair Alexander's great. Adrian Amos in the in the back, you know, in the far back is a safety. But the Packers are beatable. If you can slow down the run game pass game. You might not slow down, but if you can slow down the run game and get to Aaron Rodgers, then that's that's the kryptonite right there. But without Akeem Hicks in the middle, that's a big body. Yeah, maybe things change in a couple of weeks. We'll have to see about that. I I thought the going back to the the Broncos game, or like oh. a, in it, like man, that I thought we were gonna get a little bit better of a show, but. I can't remember the guy's name who started, but he was a quarterback in college. So he had some experience there. Royce Freeman? Yeah. I think they had... Royce Freeman was supposed to be their original guy, but I think it was someone else. Yes, yes, yes. Was it... I'm trying to think of who... I didn't even watch the game because I knew it would be horrible. I just thought maybe they could have tried to push that to Tuesday and try to allow them... Kendall was it Hinton Hamill oh Ham Hampton okay that's Hinton. who it was that's who it was he went one of nine Royce Freeman had eight carries Melvin Gordon had 12 but Hinton was a quarterback in college and he proved that like a lot of people who talk crap about quarterbacks in the NFL it's not an easy task for anyone it's a very difficult position you have quarterbacks actual quarterbacks who struggle at the position you take a guy who hasn't thrown in a game in so long. It just they I feel like the NFL by pushing back the Ravens in Pittsburgh from Thursday to Sunday, Sunday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday. And then I, you have the Denver game and they're like, "Well, you're just going to play without a quarterback because it's just your quarterbacks that got sick." I feel like maybe they could have tried for Tuesday. I don't think it would have hurt anything to say, hey, let's try for Tuesday. Let's see if we get some positive tests Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday before the game. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sorry, negative tests. But that wasn't the case. That wasn't they, There was no chance for the Broncos in that game. And it's funny, too, because, I, I mean, I did watch a little bit of the game. And I feel like every, every down that wasn't a fourth down, both teams were running the Wildcat. <laughs> I literally yeah. felt like I was just watching Taysom Hill lead the Wildcat on the Saints. And then you had the series of the running backs and the receiver uh, that started at quarterback, if you will, running the Wildcat for the Broncos. So it was kind of interesting. I felt like I was watching a college game. There was only 400 total yards in the game. Horrible. Which seems so bad. I forgot about Taysom Hill. So it was like, man, it was like 50 overall quarterbacks going at it in match. It's it's horrible, I, horrible. I don't understand. You mentioned it. I I just don't understand. Were the Broncos not good enough for them to push back their game? Well, I that's what I was. I don't know. And I think that was they, that was a lot of people's concern. Was like, so you're pushing back the Ravens and the Steelers from a Thursday game. I get it. Thursday, right? Friday, Monday, Tuesday. What you gave them an extra six days. You're telling me you couldn't figure out a way to give an extra two days or even try to push to Wednesday to allow a quarterback to come back with a few negative tests because obviously false positives happen um, 
were, you know, I just don't understand what the mindset was of the NFL. Was it, and they're going to lose anyways, so why not? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. And now the Steelers have to play. They're playing Monday now. They're going up against Washington, but still, they got to play on Monday. And then the Ravens are now playing on Tuesday. Like, I, the Cowboys and Ravens were supposed to play tomorrow. Cowboys have almost a two-week break between their games. They played yeah, last Thursday, of, and now they got to play yeah. next Tuesday. But it, yeah. It's just odd how they kept pushing it back. Did they think Lamar Jackson was going to come back or test negative? I don't know, because nothing really changed in the rosters. Just more tests came out day after yep. day. Yep. So... Uh, and it ended up being a closer game than it should have been, maybe. I mean, the Ravens still have a great defense, right? They, I think they picked off uh, Big Ben, like, right away in the first quarter. They had a couple sacks in the game. So the defense stepped up as they as we normally expect them to. And then, you know, midway through the game, I'm like, wait, RG3 used to be a game. used to be a baller. used to be a gamer out there. And then they just really didn't score the ball. And, I mean, that's the big difference between Lamar Jackson and any other mobile quarterback out there. I mean, he is a true playmaker and he can make the passes. Um, I don't think the Ravens are really a contender in the NFL for the playoffs, but come playoffs, who knows? I mean, their defense is still stellar. So, but obviously Steelers are still the undefeated team. Mm -hmm. We're coming out up to like the final third of the year. Uh, the division races at the end of the year, we'll go over our playoff predictions, but Seahawks lead the West by a game separated from top to bottom by three games all that could change uh, new orleans leads the bucks by two games or mm -hmm. they're nine and two the bucks are seven and five how'd they play 12 and 11 somebody had the bye week everyone else in their division has 11 oh the panthers panthers don't all right, so they lead by maybe it's just not updated on the site. The NFC East four and seven Giants and four and seven football team are uh, at the top. Eagles and Cowboys have three wins. What a division! Green Bay's running away. They have a three-game lead over the Vikings. Yep. The Bears are almost in last place now. The Bills have a one-game lead over the Dolphins. Then the Patriots are two games back of the Dolphins. In the AFC South, this is going to be a fun division race. You got the eight and three Titans and then seven and four Colts. Titans just destroyed the Colts. It's funny because Derrick Henry had such a good game. He had like 180 yards or plus. Mm -hmm. But it was so quiet on the news because of the game that Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill had over 200 yards in the first quarter with still just over two minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, Kansas City, obviously, against the Bucks, Brady up against Mahomes. All to, it, was, it was a fun game. It was a fun game. I thought the Chiefs were going to pull off and win by 40. Bucks came back creeping and ended up making it a super close game. Um, they ended up winning. Uh, I should, should say the Chiefs only ended up winning by three. Uh, the score did make, make it a little closer than what it was. The Chiefs did hold the dominating lead for most of the game. Seattle, as you mentioned, crept away as well. Um, but the division, I think that Tennessee and Colts uh, in the AFC South is going to come down to the last couple of games. And if we actually look at the schedule of uh, Tennessee, they have Cleveland, who has been a pretty good team this year. Anything yeah. could happen in that game. Jacksonville, who... If I'm Jacksonville, I'm tanking at this point, even though they've been playing pretty well. I, I love James Robinson. He's a very good running back. They have Detroit. I would say Tennessee should be able to manage. Green Bay and Houston. Uh, Green Bay, I'm going to say Green Bay is going to win that game. But based on Tennessee's defense, again, if they can slow down the run, which Tennessee may or may not be able to do, and move the ball. They're going to be able to run the ball on, on Green Bay. So I see at least three wins. I don't know if they're going to beat Cleveland. I don't know if they're going to beat Green Bay, but that's going to put them at 11 and three minus those other two games. 
And then if you go ahead and look at Indy's schedule to close out, you're talking uh, they're going to end up facing here next week is going to be Houston. Texans who's twice. Texans twice, which Deshaun Watson's still balling out. Deshaun Watson is was the, the all-time leader for quarterback rating for three days until Pat Mahomes took over against Tampa. Um, and then they have Vegas, who's been playing very well, uh, minus the last game against Atlanta, which Atlanta destroyed them. Uh, they have an undefeated Pittsburgh, and then they have Jacksonville to end the season. So to me, I know I had the Colts taking the division originally, but I feel like the strength of schedule is in the upper hands of Tennessee right now. I, yeah, I could see that. Especially, I feel like Indy's kind of falling off in a sense. Yep. They're winning games. They're winning a lot of them. But Jonathan Taylor, I haven't heard his name in a few weeks. Phillip Rivers is just okay. I feel like against some of these tougher teams, they're going to they're gonna really lose to. Like Green Bay, yeah. they beat the Titans. They split against. They lost against the Ravens, who are a good team. They've also lost against the Browns, who are a pretty good team. They almost lost to the Bears. They lost to the Jag. The Jaguars' only win is against the Colts to start off the year. Mm-hmm. If that flipped, I think maybe the Indianapolis would have had the advantage. It's going to be super close. It's going to be a game. They need to take – if they take both games against Houston, I think the Colts win the division. I agree. I complete. they're going to have to win those against Houston, though. Like, they're going to have to shut down Deshaun Watson and – and that running game, I don't know if David Johnson's ever coming back. They'll have Duke Johnson, but it'll it'll be an interesting stretch. That's definitely one of the uh, divisions I have my eyes on. I don't have my eyes on the East. I know the NFC East is super close, but that's they're all trash. They're all mm-hmm. super trash. They're all. I think that's the only division. That is the only division in the NFL where every single team total net points is negative. They've given up more points than they have scored. That's the only division with every single team. There's at least one team that's positive in every other division. The NFC West is every team is positive. I don't think there's another team that's or another division that's all positive. So it's kind of interesting to see there. They um, are also the only division to have everyone with a losing record. Losing record as well, exactly. So yeah, tough, tough, man. I mean, if Dak was around with the the Dallas Cowboys – have their record flipped more than likely. I personally think he was a, this was his year. Um, he'll be back next year though. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's, don't forget that there's an extra wild card spot this year, right? Only one team gets that by. We talked about it before. Uh, as of right now in the NFC, if we look at it, we have Arizona at six and five getting that third wild card spot. That puts Arizona. Rams and Seattle all in the playoffs. San Francisco would fall short, but that would be a loaded NFC West in the playoffs. Minnesota and Chicago and San Francisco are all five and six, one game out of that last wild card spot. So it very well, that's something to be on the lookout for is that third wild card spot. Uh in the AFC, the wild card teams are Cleveland, Miami, Indianapolis. Miami and Indianapolis are both seven and four. Well, guess what? You have the Vegas Raiders at six and five, along with Baltimore Ravens, six and five. Ravens are very well could take that. And don't forget, there's always that sleeper team. No matter who's the quarterback, New England Patriots are five and six. They are technically two games back. I don't see them sliding in, but with Belichick, you never know. So I'm looking forward to the AFC South race and the wild card race all in all Buffalo Miami is going to be good too. Miami's definitely the surprise team this year. Yeah. I think uh, Chad Johnson today guaranteed a win for the dolphins over the chiefs in Miami. Uh, That's tough. I think, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say to that because Miami is good, and they've been playing pretty good football. Their defense is, oh, I would say okay at best. Uh, if Fitzpatrick starts, that very well could be the case. That'll be um, that's not this Sunday. That's next Sunday. They have Cincinnati this week first. 
I think they will be full strength. Kansas City, I just don't see them losing to a team like Miami. I don't see them really losing the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, Kansas City has a bye week this week. They'll be coming out of their bye week fresh. Is this the last bye week? I believe 13 is the bat last. I could be wrong. I think it's next weekend. I could be wrong. Um, but I thought it was week four to 12. Four to 12, eight, four teams per 32 teams. Yeah, actually, you're right. I just wasn't sure how that would work because I know some teams were forced into a bye week before. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I believe you're right because that would be four teams every week, 32 teams. So, so yeah, that's going to be it. This is the final stretch to the playoffs. Week 12 is coming up. Actually, the Panthers and Bucks are on a bye week 13. Oh, they are. Okay. No, no so teams are on a. I feel like some teams might have had their bye weeks flipped. Yeah. I, I actually, I don't know. This, this site, I just, that very weird. Week 12. Yeah. But you said the Chiefs have their bye week. The Chiefs have their bye week coming up right now. All right, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna look at any of these. Oh well, everything's gotten flipped. This should be the last one, if not, uh, the Panthers and Bucks have theirs next week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I'm excited. I'm excited. This is the final stretch. Like I said, it's the final stretch going into the playoffs. I'm confident that Green Bay is going to for sure take the division. Um, I don't know if they're gonna take. The NFC uh, bye week, as of right now, it is uh, the Saints. And then Seattle, Green Bay are all a game behind the Saints. Saints, it's actually interesting because they don't have Drew Brees for the next who knows however many weeks. Alvin Kamara has not really been a focus on the offense. Uh, They do have Atlanta, which I think Atlanta could easily upset the Saints. The Saints without Brees is a whole different ball club. And Atlanta, I know their defense is bad, but if they can expose and somehow move the football on a very good New Orleans defense and score just that one extra time that they need to and without turning the ball over, could end up winning this game by, I would say, four, maybe six points. And then besides that, the Saints have to go into Philly. They have Kansas City. They have Minnesota and Carolina. It all depends on the Carolina team. Are they going to be full strength? Are they not? Um, But the Saints can easily lose a couple of these upcoming games, and that could end up being the Seahawks or or Green Bay taking the number one seed going into the playoffs. We will keep track of these over the next few weeks on the podcast. As always, if you guys did enjoy the podcast, make sure you download it. Best way to show support, give us a rating. That helps us out a lot. Subscribe so you guys download the episodes in the future. Yep. Like follow us on social media at SR Only Pod. You can follow my social media at the Healy Six on Twitter and Instagram, and Healy Six on Twitch and YouTube. Yes, and I am I Goose with four O's. Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, all, I'm all over. Just just go ahead and look me up. Add us. Most importantly, as Healy said. Add the SR Only Pod on social media. We do like to stay interactive with you guys. We like to put polls out there, um, and we just like to talk sports. We're just two two average guys that love to talk sports. So definitely hit that download, and we'll see you guys next week.